Well, good morning, good morning, and welcome to Chronicles of a Nonprofit, where we discuss the highs and lows of entrepreneurship and leadership in today's society. I'm Dr. Darina Shine, and I welcome every one of my podcast members, students, and Skills to Success uh, client base. Today is September 25th. We're moving into October. And fall is upon us, you know, it's, it's, it's that time, it's that time of year. And this is episode 53. So what are we talking about in today's episode? I have 42 people in the chat. This is a great time to be up and be moving and uh, producing success. This is a great time. And I believe that that's the reason why we have so many people in the chat. Um... Thank you all for being here. I want to share a letter that I had received. Give me one second, guys. Yeah, put in the chat how you guys are doing, what you're doing in your field of entrepreneurship. How is it going for you? And I'll be right back. All right. It's good to see that there are some highs and lows, but you guys are making it. You're doing it. I see that some of you are, you know, focusing more on your portfolio building. That is a good thing as well, because with the portfolio comes all of your, your working, your design. And that design is vital for you to remember where you were supposed to be if ever you lose focus in your business. Okay, reality, I see. Uh, okay, all right. You're doing good on your boutique. It's all going good. That's wonderful. Okay, Josh. <laughs> you got to keep working at it. You know, no matter what comes or, or goes in when it comes down to, you know, your entrepreneurship and how to trust and how to believe, you know, you're going to have to go through those thinking those, those errors, those, those thoughts of, is this, did I do the right thing? And meditating with yourself at night is one of the greatest opportunities that you have to have that inner voice of reason. When you ask yourself, did I handle that client the right way? And when someone is on your mind in the middle of the night, it may be because you may have been harsh. It may have been because you know, uh, your employee, you may not have said that one thing the correct way. So being mindful of that is very vital because our goal is to be real in business. And that's one thing that I've learned as an entrepreneur. I've learned that you can have truth and that truth can cut like a knife, but you lose client base. So you, you must, you, you must balance it. Okay. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for being so active today. That is powerful. Thank you. Yes. Deoxys, you're, you're wonderful. And just stay committed, stay committed and don't forget that there are going to be times when you're not going to feel like being a landscaper, but when you have those clients that you have to contract with, they're not caring about that. They're caring about the beauty of their landscaping. So you must be mindful of what it is you do and how happy you make your clients. Okay. And we'll definitely talk. We'll talk soon. So I got a really interesting question the other day. And it came from, let me see. Okay. It came from Rioja. And she says, hi, my name is Rioja. And I have a question for the podcast. Thank you so much for being in my life and assisting me along my entrepreneur journey. I'm a student at a university and I want to begin a small business uh, selling jewelry. And I just wondered and wanted to make sure 
if I'm allowed to use loan money that I received from a student loan to start this business. I feel bad if I do something wrong. Um, However, I need to know what the steps are in order to use my funds for that purpose. Are the loan students get money specifically used for education-related expenses? Thanks again, and I embrace and wait for our next consultation meeting. All right, Rioja. So you're asking if you're allowed to use student loan money to start up a business. And is it is it allowed? So I would suggest you go on and look up four primary sources, resource generated through Google or any other search engine. And I need you to ask yourself that question and answer it as well. Um, In today's world, it's very easy to find these answers and really get deep with them, with the research. So that's what I want to share with you. Not that I don't mind finding this conversation, finding this information and sharing it in a conversation, but I want you to know that that's how I'm finding it. So have you ever wondered what do we do with student loan money? You know, what is the right way? What is the pros? What are the cons to, you know, using our money? Is it used for, can we use it for vacations? Can we use it for fancy dinners? Um, When I was in college, I used my financial um, assistance and loans for the betterment of preparing for college, buying the books, you know, books are, were very expensive back then. I don't know what the trajectory of it is now, uh, with everything being online. I don't know if it's virtual now and you don't have to pay for the books the way you used to, but it was so expensive. Some of the books, and we only used them for 12 weeks, four or $500 books for 12 weeks. So it depends on the term of what your university says is a part of the loan process. Uh, Contracting through federal student loans is very explicit that of what the money can be used for. Um, So if you have private lenders that offer you money, at a low interest rate outside of federal institutions, then yeah, you know, I don't know what it is you can use it for, but you should use a portion of it for your education. Definitely. Um, And I know you know that, but to start up the business, the question would be how much of an investment would you be putting towards the, the loan itself for the business? If it's something that is just inventory or something that is specifically saying to pay on a state certification that you may need. Um, I believe that that is to better your, your education. And if it is connected to your degree, then I can see it being used um, specifically to gear and generate uh, the success of your future. However, a survey was done in 2019 from the Loan Hero, and it says that only 10% of students responded to asking the questions of what they use their money for. And these were some of the statistics. 42% used their student loan for food. 38% used it for bills, utilities. 33% used it for rent, 26% used it for clothes for school, and 20% used it for traveling. So you got to look at gas prices. You got to look at things that we have now that is really hard to keep up with. And as a college student, it is difficult because you're trying to Use your mind, your body, and your spirit. Many of us are working and going to school 
And it's just dead. It's, it's difficult. So I would suggest you be mindful of maybe possibly contacting your lender and just asking. Because if a lender finds out, they could easily uh, refuse your new contract. They could take the funds back. They can make you repay at a higher interest rate. And then um, you don't want to face legal action. So that's something. But if it's something small, like, you know, you get $5,000 and you spend 1000 on, you know, a state certificate. I mean, they don't know what you're spending your money on. You know, because of the far reaching repercussions of this discussion, it's best to uh, raise startup funds in another way. Okay. Especially if you go and tell someone that you started your business with your student loans, try to keep that private. That's why I say tell certain things to people when they need to know them. But other than that, be in silence. So the pros, many students will find it easier to qualify for student loans compared to the traditional business financial setup. So it will give you options that you will have the money available to you from the student loans. It would be easier and feasible in order to get it started that way. So that's why I can see the question making sense. You may be able to get a better interest rate also with a student loan than a business loan because that's what you're, you're going to have to try to apply for. And you're more at risk with a business loan and you will have a higher interest rate. So personal loans or credit cards is not a good way to go. Um, however, it will build your credit score if you pay on time and if you pay within a six month period of time or whatever it is, same as cash. Student loans allow you to pay back the amount over a much longer period of time and you can adjust your repayment options if you need to. So you can defer if you have lower income coming in, they will work with you. Some allow for miss, you, miss payments. So you can even miss a payment. You could call in and say, hey, I have something going on. And, you know, you won't have to pay for that month, but the interest rate will continue on. Student loan payments generally start after graduation. So you don't have the immediate month to month payment to make like you would a credit card. So those are the good things about the question you asked. Now, the cons is um, using a student loan is very risky because if you get caught, you could have some legal consequences to it. You know, um, you'll take on even more student debt and these this debt may follow you after graduation into months of payment for budgeting and uh, borrowing more money than you need to will always increase the amount you owe over the time and the interest. So be very careful of that. And compared to business loans, personal loans and credit card debt, you can't discharge student loan debt during bankruptcy. You'll still be responsible for making the payments on the debt, even if you don't have the means to repay. So you got to ask yourself the question, how are you going to start your business? So you want to draw up what is known. And I talk about this all the time here at the Scales to Success LLC Project Consulting Services here in Youngstown, Ohio, where we help you build your brand through portfolio building, business planning and designing, and just that leadership advice that you would need when it comes down to making the right decisions in your business as a new entrepreneur. So determine, you know, your business plan. What about how, how much will your fees be? How much will licensing be? How much will your credentialing be to establish your business? Um, the average marketing budget for startups in your brand. If you're doing a lash bar, how much will it cost in order to make this a success for your lash company? The cost of producing and buying inventory. How much is it going to be for you to buy your lashes, your lash glue, your, your uh, sterilized, whatever you're going to need in it, in, in the lash company? 
And then what about the money to pay your employees or your contractors? You might have to update the building in which you're renting. And you might have to pay for the lights, the gas, the water. How are you going to put your utilities into action and other essential equipment? And then what one can do instead of paying with student loans, use that money so you won't be caught up later. You can definitely cut down on your living expenses. Like maybe if you're riding in a brand new car, you might want to downgrade. Take that money that you would put into the car payment and knock the payment down. Say you're paying $250 a month or $300 a month for a car note and then $150 a month for insurance, then that's for $50, $500 a month. Why don't you cut it down into a smaller vehicle or, you know, not so newer vehicle and then use the same funds that you would pay for the vehicle uh, over time and put it into your business or pay off the new vehicle by doubling up the payments per month, getting it done in half the time. Then the other, you know, if you were on a 52 uh, or a five year plan, you'll knock it down to two and a half, two and a quarter. Now, what you can do is now use that other two and a half years and put that towards your business. So there's always different ways that you can do, you know, you can better your circumstances. And and then just figure out, you know, uh, who's going to validate all the things that you need for your business. I mean... You don't have to worry about trying to be the best or looking the best when you just started your business. Um, You could find a business partner. You can also um, have your partner help you with the finances and tell them about the startup idea, about the dream, and then look at investors. And then alternative funding options. You can go, like I said, get a credit card, get a business loan, you know, those things are going to take some time to pay back. So it's about starting with that business plan first, putting the mission into action, and then looking at the budget. You do those two things, you will not go wrong. Lady R, okay? (laughs) So I hope that that helped you. I hope that you are able to understand why it is so let's let's ask the class the question why is it important to have a business plan prepared for the future why is it important to have a business plan prepared for the future Yeah. Exactly. Kennedy, yes, it's guiding you through each stage of starting your business. It guides you through. So you kind of got a telescope or a panoramic view of what it is that you're going to move your business into. So you are not just jumping into it. You know, a lot of us, again, remember we talked about patience. We talked about patience. So yes, it's going to steer your business. Yes, Josh, steering the business in the right way that it goes. So it will, when you start it up, it will grow correctly. Business plans help you structure. Yes, Ron. Thank you. Thank you. And it's really not as hard as you think. You know, if you sit back and you look at a journal, I'm sure that any entrepreneur has thought about their business and has told someone or wrote it down or had a dream that they did what they're starting up. And when you do that, you can say, okay, 
I'm going to start up this business consultation service. And these are the, the options that I'm going to have for my clients. And I'm going to give them package one. I'm going to give them package two. I'm going to give them package three. Then I'm going to give them a la carte. I'm going to give them an appetizer menu. So you can mix and match certain things based on income and based on the amount that, uh, you know, how I put my business plan together, as I said, the ultimate goal is this. I want my clients to have this particular package, package number one, and it is the most viable. But when you break it down and go to package two, you get less for the amount of money that it would take in order for you to get the job done. But then you have other things that you're missing out on. So these are things like, say, research, you know, opportunities that would make you uh, not have to spend so much time doing research on your own. I'll just give you the overview of what research I found. And then you can have um, small areas of thought where you can just have the consultation service. This is an hour of consultation conversation, the motivation to get you started on what it is, but you lead and guide and steer the entire project. And then I'm just here for any questions and answer, um, but I'm not spending a lot of time, not even 10, 15 minutes with you because there is nothing that you have etched in stone. There's no contract. There's no leadership plan. There's no in any of that. So you want to have that in your train of thought when you're reaching for the business goal. Absolutely. Absolutely. Linda, it can help you get funding. These business plans can do just that. They can help you empower yourself by uh, moving through the process of going to the bank and getting vetted. If you're a nonprofit, you go get vetted at the bank. The bank knows who you are, and then they'll begin to look at your income through your business model and look at your, you know, the way you use your money in investments and in savings, and then they can work with you. They can say you're pre-qualified for, we're going to give you, we're going to try you out and give you $5,000 to start up your business, but they're not going to give it to you in the first day that you start a business or as soon as you get your LLC. A million and one people, remember this, has applied for an LLC and 72% of them are literally sitting on a dream. That's a lot of people sitting on a dream that they've paid for. So be mindful of that, shining entrepreneurs. Thank you. Thank you so much. And the final thing I want to say is there's no wrong way to do a business plan. You can do it based upon how you think. And if you think that you want to start with the strategy first and not the mission statement or the overview of the business itself, then you do just that. It's going to be okay. Because in the end, you're always going to go back and look at this plan as a map, a guideline to your career, a guideline to what it is you always wanted to do, the structure, you know? So being part of a organization that helps to build your credentials, like the Better Business Bureau, like uh, the U.S. Small Business Administration in your state, or your community, a uh, grant opportunity portals that can help you to get, you know, funding for small investment portions of your business. They're good. They're good to take business plans too. So that's something that I want you to acknowledge and realize is a part of the development in business in today's world, whether you're virtual or whether you are brick and mortar. So I thank you so, so much for being a part of the Chronicles of a Nonprofit. This is episode 53. We are super excited that you guys are really involved in your own entrepreneurship. And I hope these little chronicles 
help you to see the highs and lows in business. Now, tomorrow, I think, or the next session, fit, uh, episode 54, I want to talk about individuals who have suffered from having lost morality in business. And instead of being straightforward, dotting the I's, crossing the T's, they became lax, they became greedy, they became, uh, what word is that? They became silenced and they turned their head to things that they knew was not right because they were making six figures. So I want to talk to you about that in our next episode. I think that is very vital. I think that is extremely important. And I do believe that that is something that is going to bring success because when you know better, you do better. And white collar crime is a federal offense. So these are things that I want to share with you. So you will be in the know and the high and the lows of what business situations can do to us if we're not careful. So I thank you so much for being here, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing anywhere you see this podcast. Thank you. Thank you so much for being a part of the engagement of this podcast, Chronicles of a Nonprofit. I really appreciate everybody's input. I thank you all so, so very much. I will be getting the YouTube platform up and ready, but it is sharing location with another project that I'm doing. And as soon as that project is over, we're going to have one unified chronicles. And then it'll be something that will feel like home to you because I don't want to lose those people who are already a genuine part of my YouTube family with the Chronicles of a Nonprofit. Thank you so much. And as always, stay consistent, be on time, and always be your authentic true self. Peace.